Four plasma blasts seared the air, fusing into a brilliant green flash that reduced a tree trunk to molten slag. Elite Pandronian mercenary Kide surged through the steaming gap, armor-clad boots trampling charred splinters. Behind him, his quad-armed second-in-command Thrax and the rest of the squad charged into the jungle clearing, particle rifles spitting lethal streams of supercharged ions. Their target, a scruffy human male, cowered behind a boulder. He raised shaking hands. Don't shoot. I, I'm Dr. Isaac Cox, Nebula Corporation. Can shove it, Keed growled, his voice a menacing rasp through helmet speakers. Thrax circled around, gun trained and ready to execute. Intel says you're a terrorist. We're here to rectify that. It's a setup, Cox shouted. I'm no threat. Look. He yanked down his collar, exposing a glowing rune etched into his neck. Cade's breath caught. The seal of the ancients. Treaties written in the blood of galaxies marked this human as sacrosanct, untouchable. The secrets etched into his DNA could raise long-dead civilizations from the ashes of aeons. Killing him would guarantee retribution on a genocidal scale. Lowering his rifle, Kaid scowled. Typical human trickery, exploiting ancient laws. Thrax hissed furiously. Seal or not, Nebula Corp's paying us to ice this ape. I say we clip him and claim ignorance. Wait, Zathri, their tech specialist, piped up. I've been digging through the contract file, the duplicitous piles of Varen shit. It's rigged to make us the fall guys while Nebula keeps its hands clean. Disgust soured Keed's tongue. They were disposable proxies, thrown into the line of fire by some corporate shadow players. A hail of mass driver rounds churned the earth. Black-clad goons bristling with illegal mil-spec gear poured from the trees. Nebula's cleaners tying off loose ends. Kill or be killed. The staccato crackle of Thrax's rifle joined the booming thunder of Keed's auto slug thrower. Cox screamed. Keed cursed vehemently. In a galaxy where humans spread like cockroaches, swarming worlds with reckless avarice, here he was saving one of the pests. Blinded by hate, he'd almost kickstarted a war. Honor demanded he protect Cox now, even if it meant betraying all he believed. Thrax, grab the ape! We're getting off this rock! He vaulted the boulder to lay down covering fire. As metallic slugs chewed rock and soil, Keed grinned savagely. One Pandronian fire team against an army of corporate thugs and all the jungles of Zephyrus Prime. At last, a real challenge. He bellowed an ancient battle cry. Time to show these conniving piejacks why Pandronian wrath was feared across star systems. Time to drag some truly despicable conspiracies into the light and make them burn. Cade's battle cry echoed through the jungle as his fire team tore into the nebula cleaners with relentless fury. Slugs and ion bolts ripped through bodies and barked trees. Thrax hauled a shrieking cox over the boulder, shoving the human behind cover. Stay down if you want to keep breathing, Thrax snarled, his forearms a blur as he reloaded and fired in seamless rhythm. Zathri lunged into the fray, particle blades flashing as she danced through the enemy ranks, a whirlwind of dismemberment. Cade led from the front, his massive frame shrugging off rounds as he blasted mercs into bloody mist. Pandronians, on me! Fighting retreat! Covering each other with blistering firepower, the squad fell back into the jungle, dragging cocks along. Creepers and vines slapped at their armor as they crashed through the undergrowth. Gradually, the crack of gunfire faded behind them, swallowed by the drone of insects and alien bird calls. Cox stumbled, gasping for breath. We, where are you taking me? Away from the bastards trying to ghost you, Keed growled. He yanked Cox back to his feet. Now shut your yap and move. For hours they forced a grueling pace, trekking deeper into the wild. Bioluminescent fungi painted the gloom in eerie blues and purples. Mushroom stalks towered like skyscrapers. The air hung thick and humid alive with the chitter and buzz of unseen creatures. As dusk fell, they reached a wide, churning river. Cade called a halt, his suit sensors probing the murky waters. We'll cross here. Thrax, Zathri, throw together a raft from those logs. Davix, Urok, establish a perimeter. You must be insane, Cox babbled, eyeing the treacherous current with naked fear. We'll never make it. 
Keed rounded on the human, getting right in his face. You've got two options, monkey. Cross with us or take your chances alone when the Nebula hit squads catch up. Eyes sharp, Cox nodded. The squad worked quickly, lashing logs into a crude raft with creeper vines. Keed herded Cox aboard with a rough shove. Thrax and Zathri took up positions on either side, makeshift poles in hand. Together they shoved off into the churning flow. Halfway across, disaster struck. A massive dark shape exploded from the depths, a nightmarish cross between a crocodile and a squid. Tentacles lashed out, seizing Thrax in an iron grip and dragging him over the side. The raft lurched and spun as the Pandronian vanished into the boiling foam with a gargled scream. Kide roared in rage, blasting at the creature, but his slugs only gouged the water. Suddenly, Cox was in motion, diving into the maelstrom without hesitation. Hang on, he yelled, before disappearing beneath the surface. Moments later, he resurfaced, dragging a limp Thrax with him. Powerful strokes brought them alongside the raft. Kide and Zathri heaved them aboard, stunned. Cox coughed up water, eyes wild. Jabbed it in the eye. Made it let go. Thrax groaned, breathing raggedly. Purple blood leaked from vicious lacerations. Keed crouched over his second, checking the wounds, then turned to Cox. You saved him. Why? The human looked away. Nobody gets left behind. Kide studied him, almost seeing him for the first time. Maybe there was more to this ape than met the eye. As night enveloped the jungle, they took shelter in an abandoned prospector camp, patching up Thrax and taking stock of their supplies. Zathri huddled over a salvage comms unit, face illuminated by the glow of hollow screens. Cade loomed over Cox, voice low and deadly serious. All right, monkey, no more games. You're going to tell me exactly why Nebula wants you dead. Now. Cox's eyes darted nervously around the dimly lit camp before settling on Keed. It's complicated. Nebula hired me to study precursor artifacts, but I uncovered something far beyond their wildest dreams. Before he could elaborate, a rustle in the undergrowth sent Cade's squad into action. Weapons snapped up, targeting the source of the disturbance. A lithe figure emerged from the shadows, hands raised. At ease, warriors, the newcomer spoke, her voice smooth yet authoritative. I am Area Vax, Phantom Cell operative. Keed's grip tightened on his weapon. Phantom Cell? What game are you playing? Arya's forearms spread wide. No game, Kide. We've been monitoring this situation. Nebula's claws sink deeper than you know. Her gaze swept over the battered mercenaries. I can get you out of here. There's a rebel base in the northern mountains where you can regroup. Thrax snarled. And why should we trust you? A distant explosion punctuated his words. Arya's expression hardened. Because those ghost commandos will be on us any minute. It's your only chance. Cade weighed their options, acutely aware of his team's exhaustion. Lead on, he growled. They plunged into the wilderness, Arya guiding them through treacherous terrain. Electrical storms crackled overhead, ionizing the air. Jagged crystal formations tore at their armor. Twice, Arya's reflexes saved them from ambush by Zephyrus Prime's deadliest predators. As they trudged onward, Arya filled them in. Nebula's tendrils reach into both human and Pandronian governments. This goes beyond corporate greed. They're after power on a galactic scale. Cox stumbled, panning. My research, they wanted me to weaponize precursor tech. I refused. Keed hauled the human to his feet. Keep moving. Days blurred together as they pushed northward. Arya proved her worth time and again, her combat skills rivaling even Keed's elite squad. A grudging respect began to form between them. Finally, they crested a ridge to find a concealed entrance carved into the mountainside. Inside, they were greeted by a grizzled human. Commander Riser Cran, he introduced himself. Welcome to the Zephyrus Liberation Front. Riser laid out their situation. His rebels had been fighting Nebula's exploitation for years. Now he proposed an alliance, the mercenaries' firepower in exchange for shelter and support in exposing the conspiracy. As Keed molded over, Cox's excited shout echoed from an adjacent lab. The team rushed in to find him hunched over a console, eyes wide. 
The precursor activation sequence, Cox babbled, it requires both human DNA and a Pandronian's bioelectric field. We need each other to unlock its secrets. The implications sank in. Human and Pandronian, forced to cooperate or lose everything. Thrax bristled, rounding on area. You led us into a trap. Accusation flew. Fists clenched. Keed stepped between them, voice cold steel. Enough. We face a common enemy. Stand together or fall alone. A tense silence fell, broken by the sudden wail of alarms. Zathri's fingers flew across a nearby terminal, bringing up security feeds. What they saw chilled them to the bone. Ghost commandos swarmed the mountain, led by a towering figure in midnight armor. Commander Kyrax had found them. Explosions rocked the base. Gunfire erupted. Keed's mind raced, assessing options, formulating plans. To arms, he roared. Thrax, Zathri, shore up the eastern corridor. Davix, Urok, covering fire from the upper levels. Cox, stay with Riser and coordinate comms. He turned to Arya, their eyes locking. You're with me. We hold the main gate. As one, they surged into battle. Keed and Arya fought back to back, a whirlwind of destruction. Ion bolts sizzled. Nebula troops fell. But more kept coming. A colossal blast tore through the defenses. Kyrax strode through the breach, weapons blazing. Keed saw Arya go down, purple blood staining her armor. With a primal roar, he charged the Ghost Commander, auto slugs thundering, ripping into the Ghost Commander's armor. Kyrax staggered, his own weapons blazing. Keed felt white hot pain sear across his side as a round found a gap in his plating. The two titans clashed in a fury of blows, armor cracking under inhuman strength. Kyrax's fist smashed into Cade's jaw, sending him reeling. The ghost commander loomed over him, energy blade humming to life. Pathetic, Kyrax sneered. I expected more from the great Cade. A blur of motion caught Cade's eye. Arya, bleeding but alive, hurled herself at Kyrax. Her particle blades sliced through his shield emitters. Cade seized the opening, driving his combat knife deep into a joint of Kyrax's armor. The ghost commander howled in pain and fury. He lashed out, catching Arya with a vicious backhand that sent her flying. But the distraction was enough. Cade's auto slug thrower roared to life, point blank. Kyrax's chest plate disintegrated under the barrage. Mortally wounded, Kyrax stumbled back. This isn't over, he gasped, activating an emergency teleporter. In a flash of actinic light, he vanished. Cade hauled himself to his feet, offering Arya a hand. Nice moves. She grinned through the pain. Not so bad yourself for a Pandronian. A deafening explosion rocked the base. Thrax's voice crackled over the comm. Multiple breaches! We're overrun! Cade and Arya sprinted through smoke-filled corridors. They found Thrax and Zathri desperately holding a choke point, Cox cowering behind them. Bodies of ghost commandos littered the floor. Fall back, Keed bellowed, to the inner sanctum. They retreated deeper into the mountain, sealing blast doors behind them. In a cavernous chamber filled with rebel tech, Commander Riser barked orders to the surviving fighters. Status report, Kai demanded. Riser's face was grim. We've lost the outer defenses, but we bloodied them. They'll need time to regroup. A strangled cry drew their attention. Zathri collapsed, clutching a smoking wound in his abdomen. Cox rushed to the Pandronian side, frantically applying Medigel. Stay with us, Cox pleaded. Zathri's eyes fixed on Keed. Boss? I cracked their systems. It's worse than we thought. He coughed, purple blood staining his lips. Nebula? They're after a precursor weapon. Planet killer. It's why they want the dock so bad. Kide's blood ran cold. Where? Deep! Underground! Zathri wheezed. Gotta stop them! Can't let them... His eyes glazed over, his last breath rattling in his chest. A heavy silence fell. Cox looked up, face pale. If Nebula activates that weapon, billions will die. Keed's mind raced. He turned to Riser. We need to hit their main compound, now, before they can regroup. The rebel commander nodded. Agreed. 
but it's a fortress. We'll need a distraction. I'll lead the assault, Arya volunteered. Draw their forces to the surface. While we go deep, Keed finished, he locked eyes with Thrax and Cox. You two are with me. We find that control hub and shut it down. Within minutes, they had a plan. As Arya readied her strike team, Keed's group geared up for their infiltration. Cox fidgeted with an unfamiliar plasma pistol. I've never... the human stammered. Thrax clapped him on the shoulder, nearly knocking him over. Stick close. We'll keep you breathing. They emerged into the pre-dawn gloom. In the distance, Nebula's compound loomed like a cancerous growth on the jungle. Keed nodded to Arya. See you on the other side. She flashed a predatory grin. Try to leave some for us. With a war cry, Arya led her forces in a frontal assault on the compound. Alarms blared. Weapon emplacements roared to life. Under the cover of chaos, Cade's team slipped into the undergrowth, circling toward a maintenance access Zathri had identified. They reached a corroded hatch. Thrax made short work of the lock. As gunfire echoed in the distance, they descended into darkness. The tunnel opened into a vast subterranean complex. Precursor architecture melded with human tech in a dizzying array. They crept through shadows, bypassing patrols of nebula security forces rushing to reinforce the surface. There, Cox whispered, indicating a massive blast door. That's got to be it. Keed nodded. Thrax, do your thing. The demo expert placed breaching charges with practiced ease. They took cover as the door disintegrated in a thunderous roar. Beyond lay a cathedral-like chamber, dominated by a pulsing, organic structure. Tendrils of light danced across its surface. At its base sat an ornate control panel. Remarkable, Cox breathed. The bio-neural interface. It's even more advanced than I imagined. Cade growled. Can you shut it down? Before Cox could answer, the staccato of gunfire erupted behind them. A squad of ghost commandos poured into the chamber, led by a towering figure Keed recognized all too well. Commander Kyrax had found them. Commander Kyrax's hulking form filled the chamber entrance, his armor scorched and dented from their previous encounter. Behind him, a phalanx of ghost commandos fanned out, weapons trained on Keed's team. Step away from the control panel, Kyrax growled, his voice distorted by his damaged helmet. Kide's mind raced, assessing their options. They were outnumbered and outgunned. He locked eyes with Thrax, a silent understanding passing between them. In one fluid motion, Keed dove for cover as Thrax lobbed a plasma grenade into the midst of the Ghost Commandos. The explosion rocked the chamber, scattering their attackers. Cox, get that thing shut down, Keed bellowed, laying down suppressing fire. The human scientist scrambled to the control panel, fingers flying across alien interfaces. It's not responding. The activation sequence is already... A stray bolt caught Cox in the shoulder, spinning him to the ground. Kyrax strode through the chaos, his massive frame seemingly impervious to the hail of return fire. You're too late, the ghost commander sneered. Nebula's vision will be realized, with or without you. The chamber shuddered. The organic structure at its center pulsed with sickly light. Tendrils of energy lashed out, coalescing into a swirling vortex. What have you done? Thrax roared, emptying his weapon into Kyrax's chestplate. The ghost commander staggered but didn't fall. He laughed, a chilling sound. I've activated the extinction protocol. This world will be cleansed, and from its ashes, a new order will rise. The vortex expanded reality itself seeming to warp around its edges. Keed felt a tugging sensation, as if gravity itself was failing. We need to get out of here, Arya shouted over the din, helping a dazed cox to his feet. Kyrax raised his weapon, aiming squarely at Keed's head. You won't escape this time. Before he could fire, the chamber convulsed. The floor beneath Kyrax's feet crumbled, sending him plummeting into the swirling maelstrom below. His scream was swallowed by the otherworldly energies. Move, Keed ordered, half-dragging Cox towards the exit. They fought their way back to the surface, the complex collapsing around them. As they emerged into the pre-dawn light, the ground heaved. Massive structures of alien design erupted from the earth, stretching towards the sky. 
Arya's voice crackled over the comm. Keyed, we're seeing this all over the compound. What the hell is happening? Before he could respond, a piercing shriek split the air. A monstrous shape rose from the ruins of the Nebula facility. A mechanical horror of impossible geometry and pulsing energy fields. Precursor drone, Cox whispered, his face ashen. They're awakening. The drone's eye-like sensors locked onto their position. It raised an appendage crackling with destructive power. Scatter, Keed roared. They dove for cover as the drone unleashed a devastating energy blast, vaporizing the ground where they had stood moments before. As dawn broke over Zephyrus Prime, more drones took to the skies. The extinction protocol had begun. Cade's comm unit chirped. An unfamiliar voice, crisp and authoritative, cut through the chaos. This is Colonel Dravich of Intergalactic Security. Your team has been drafted for an urgent mission. The fate of this world hangs in the balance. Rendezvous at these coordinates immediately. Coordinates flashed across Keed's HUD. He looked at his battered team, then at the nightmarish machines filling the sky. You heard the man, Keed growled. Let's move. They set off across the war-torn landscape, leaving the smoldering ruins of the nebula compound behind. The real battle was just beginning. The coordinates led Kide's team to a desolate stretch of jungle, unmarked on any map. As they approached, reality itself seemed to waver. A massive structure shimmered into view, the cloaked precursor bunker. Stealth tech, Thrax grunted, makes our gear look primitive. They crept forward, weapons ready. The bunker's entrance loomed before them, an obsidian maw ringed with alien glyphs. Kide raised a fist, halting the group. Something's not right, he growled. A burst of plasma fire erupted from within, confirming his suspicions. Ghost commandos poured out of the bunker, led by a familiar figure in midnight armor. Kyrax, Arya hissed. The battle erupted in a fury of energy weapons and explosions. Cade's team fought with desperate intensity, but the ghost commandos had the advantage of position. They were being pushed back. We need to get inside, Keed roared over the din. Cox, with me! He grabbed the scientist's arm, dragging him towards the entrance. A hail of plasma bolts forced them to dive for cover. When Keed looked up, Cox was gone. Inside the bunker, Cox stumbled through alien corridors, disoriented by the otherworldly architecture. A cold voice stopped him in his tracks. Dr. Cox, how kind of you to join us. He turned to see Commander Kirax, her helmet removed. The ghost commando's eyes gleamed with cruel intelligence. You don't understand what you're dealing with, Cox stammered. Kyrax laughed. Oh, but I do. More than you can imagine. She circled him like a predator. Nebula Corp, the war between your races, all of it orchestrated by me. Cox's blood ran cold as Kyrax detailed her machinations, the depth of her betrayal. Before he could respond, alarms blared throughout the facility. Kyrax's eyes widened. The doomsday countermeasures, she breathed, perfect. Outside, the air filled with a menacing hum. Swarms of sleek, deadly machines poured from hidden launch bays. Hunter-killer drones awakened from millennia of slumber. Kyde's team found themselves fighting a war on two fronts. Ghost commandos pushed from one side, while waves of lethal drones attacked from the other. They were being overwhelmed. Fall back, Arya shouted. Into the bunker! They retreated deeper into the alien structure, sealing blast doors behind them. The respite was brief. More drones emerged from hidden compartments, their weapons primed for extermination. Thrax's massive frame absorbed a barrage of energy bolts meant for Kide. The Pandronian staggered, smoke rising from his armor. Go, Thrax growled. Find Cox. End this. Cade hesitated, then nodded grimly. He and Arya fought their way deeper into the complex. They found Cox in the central control hub, frantically working at an alien console. Relief washed over the scientist's face. Thank God, Cox gasped. I've almost got it shut down. I just need... A plasma bolt sizzled past Keed's ear. He spun to see a ghost commando emerging from the shadows, helmet removed to reveal a face Keed knew all too well. Raz, he snarled. His former squad mate grinned. Sorry, old friend. 
Can't let the good doctor finish his work. Raz lunged for the console. Cox's eyes widened in realization. Without hesitation, the scientist threw himself at Raz, grappling with the larger man. Shut it down, Cox shouted to Keed. I'll hold him off. Keed moved to help, but Arya's voice crackled over the comm. Keed, we've got a problem. Her tone sent ice through his veins. He activated his tactical display, watching as Arya's helmet cam showed a confrontation with Colonel Dravik. The Phantom Cell leader's words chilled him to the bone. It was all us, Arya. Nebula Corp, the war, even Kyrax. Pawns in our game. Keed's mind reeled. Another layer of betrayal. Another mastermind pulling the strings. He looked back at Cox, still locked in desperate combat with Raz. The fate of worlds hung in the balance. Keed had to choose. Keed's fingers flew across the alien console. Cox's desperate struggle with Raz fading into background noise. The fate of worlds hung on his ability to decipher and counteract the extinction protocol. A blood-curdling scream tore through the chamber. Keed whirled to see Cox slumped against the wall, a smoking hole in his chest. Raz stood over him, plasma pistol still glowing. You're too late, Raz sneered, turning his weapon on Kaid. Before he could fire, the entire structure shuddered. Alarms blared as emergency bulkheads slammed shut, sealing them in the control room. Keed's calm crackled to life. This is Commander Kyrax to all Ghost Commando units. The extinction protocol is now under my direct control. Prepare for immediate evacuation. Raz's eyes widened in disbelief. But our orders... Cade seized the moment of distraction, tackling his former squad mate. They grappled on the floor, each fighting for control of the weapon. A stray blast scorched the ceiling, showering them with sparks. Keed! Arya's voice cut through the chaos. Kyrax has seized an orbital precursor array. She's using it to amplify the protocol's signal. He slammed Raz's hand against the floor, finally dislodging the pistol. A swift elbow to the temple left the traitor unconscious. I'm on my way, Keed growled, retrieving the weapon. He spared a final glance at Cox's body before racing out of the chamber. The bunker was a war zone. Pandronian and human rebels clashed with ghost commandos and rogue security drones. Keed carved a path through the melee, linking up with Arya near the entrance. We need to get to that array, he shouted over the din of battle. Arya nodded grimly. I've got a plan, but you're not going to like it. Minutes later, they stood before a decrepit precursor teleportation pad. Thrax worked furiously to bring the ancient tech online, his massive frame scorched and dented from their earlier firefight. This is suicide, Keed muttered. When has that ever stopped us? Arya replied with a grim smile. The pad hummed to life, crackling with eldritch energies. Thrax stepped back, nodding to Keed. It's now or never, boss. I've set the coordinates for the Array's central power nexus. Keed clasped the Pandronian's shoulder. Good luck, old friend. With a blinding flash, Thrax vanished. Keed turned to the rest of his battered team. All right, people. We've got one shot at this. Arya and I will lead the main assault, draw their fire, keep them busy while Thrax does his work. As they raced to their ships, the sky above Zephyrus Prime lit up with weapons fire. The orbital array loomed in the distance, its defenses already engaging the first wave of rebel fighters. Cade strapped himself into the cockpit of a salvaged Ghost Commando interceptor. His comm crackled with a familiar voice. This is Colonel Dravich. All Phantom Cell units converge on the array. Secure the extinction protocol at all costs. Aria's face appeared on his view screen, her expression grim. Looks like we've got company. Kide ignited the engines, rocketing towards the unfolding space battle. Then let's give them a warm welcome. The void erupted in chaos as Rebel, Ghost Commando, and Phantom Cell ships clashed in a desperate struggle for control of the array. Keed's stolen interceptor wove through the carnage, plasma bolts sizzling past his canopy. A swarm of hunter-killer drones descended on their formation. Kide barrel rolled, letting loose a barrage of missiles. The explosion illuminated the twisted metal of the precursor array, now tantalizingly close. Thrax, status report! Kide barked into his comm. Static crackled then. 
almost there. Defenses, more than expected. The transmission cut out. Keed's grip tightened on the controls. Everything hinged on Thrax's success. Suddenly, the array's energy signature fluctuated. Its impenetrable shields flickered and died. Now, Arya shouted, teleport team, go! Keed slammed the emergency eject, feeling the familiar disorientation of teleportation. He materialized in a twisting alien corridor, immediately ducking as plasma fire erupted around him. Ghost commandos had been lying in wait. Keed rolled behind cover, returning fire. He caught glimpses of his team. Arya, a handful of human and Pendronian rebels, fighting for their lives in the close quarters. They pushed forward, step by bloody step. Keed's world narrowed to the next target, the next burst of covering fire, the next room to clear. Time lost all meaning in the frenetic push towards Kyrax's control center. A massive explosion rocked the array. Keed's calm crackled to life one final time. It's done, Thrax's voice came, weak and pained. Shields, down for good. Stop her, Keed, whatever it takes. The line went dead. Keed allowed himself a moment of grief before refocusing on the mission. He caught Arya's eye, saw the same willpower reflected there. They reached a massive set of doors, ornate precursor glyphs pulsing with sickly energy. Beyond lay Kirax and the chance to end this madness once and for all. No turning back now, Arya said, setting the last of their breaching charges. Keed nodded grimly. Let's finish this. The doors disintegrated in a thunderous roar. They charged into the control center, weapons at the ready, to find Commander Kyrax waiting for them. Keed and Arya burst into the control center, weapons raised. Commander Kyrax stood at the central console, her back to them. She turned slowly, a cruel smile playing across her face. Congratulations, she said, voice dripping with sarcasm. You've made it to the finale. Keed's finger tightened on the trigger. Step away from the console. Now. Kyrax's hand hovered over a glowing panel. One press and the extinction protocol goes live. Billions die. Your move, heroes. The standoff stretched for an agonizing moment. Suddenly, the array shuddered violently. Alarms blared as systems began shutting down. Kyrax's eyes widened in genuine shock. What have you done? Not us, Arya said, a grim smile on her face. Thrax. The Pandronian sacrifice had paid off. With the array's defenses crippled, allied ships swarmed the structure. Kyrax snarled in frustration, reaching for a hidden weapon. Keed was faster. A single plasma bolt struck her in the shoulder, sending her sprawling. It's over, Keed growled, keeping his weapon trained on the fallen commander. As they secured Kyrax, the full scope of Phantom Cell's deception came to light. The manufactured war, the manipulation of both sides, all exposed. The galaxy reeled from the revelations. In the days that followed, an uneasy peace settled over Zephyrus Prime. Humans and Pandronians, long divided, now faced the daunting task of reconciliation. Cade and Aria found themselves thrust into new roles as envoys of unity. They traveled from colony to colony, sharing their story. At a town hall on New Arcadia, a human settlement, Kaid addressed a wary crowd. We've been played for fools, he said, his voice carrying across the packed auditorium. But now we have a chance to forge our own destiny, together. Not everyone was receptive. On both sides, hardliners resisted the new alliance. During a visit to the Pandronian outpost of Vexthor, Cade and Area's security team intercepted a group of extremists planting explosives near the main power core. The peace remained fragile. Terrorist attacks targeting shared facilities became more frequent. Cade and Arya worked tirelessly, knowing that each successful mission strengthened the bonds between their peoples. Their efforts didn't go unnoticed. Neither did the threat they posed to those who sought to reignite the conflict. On a remote Pandronian mining colony, that threat came to a head. Cade and Arya had just finished addressing a mixed group of human and Pandronian workers when the first explosions rocked the compound. Ghost commandos, Kyrax's elite troops, swarmed the facility. Get down, Keed shouted, tackling a Pandronian civilian as plasma fire erupted around them. Arya coordinated with local security forces, setting up a defensive perimeter. 
They're trying to cut us off from the landing pads. For hours, they fought a running battle through the twisting corridors of the outpost. Humans and Pandronians fought side by side, covering each other's retreats and sharing dwindling supplies of ammunition. As dawn broke, reinforcements finally arrived. The remaining ghost commandos melted away into the surrounding wilderness. But the damage was done. The compound lay in ruins, and dozens of civilians, human and Pandronian alike, had lost their lives. In the aftermath, as the wounded were tended to and the dead mourned, Kaid received an urgent communique. Intelligence had finally pinpointed Kyrax's base of operations, a hidden fortress on an uncharted ice world. Arya joined him as he studied the holographic projection of the target. One last mission, she said quietly. Cade nodded, his heart made. Let's finish this. They assembled a joint strike force, the best of both species, united in purpose. As their dropships plunged through the planet's turbulent atmosphere, Kaid addressed his team one final time. Whatever happens down there, he said, his voice steady over the comm, remember what we're fighting for. Not just our own survival, but a future where our children don't have to know the horror of this war. The bay doors opened, revealing a blinding expanse of white. They plunged into the storm, towards Kyrax's mountain fortress, and the promise of an end to the bloodshed. Storm, ready to end this conflict once and for all. The assault on Kyrax's fortress was brutal and swift. Kaid and Arya led the charge, their mixed team of humans and Pandronians fighting with a unified purpose that would have seemed impossible mere months ago. They breached the icy walls, fought through automated defenses, and finally cornered Kyrax in her command center. But as Keed leveled his weapon at the defeated commander, Kyrax's laughter echoed through the chamber. You fools, she spat. You have no idea what's coming. In the aftermath of Kyrax's capture, her final words haunted Keed. The victory felt hollow as reports flooded in from across the galaxy. Remote colonies going dark, deep space outposts falling silent. A creeping dread spread through both human and Pandronian high command. Kaid found Arya poring over data streams in the war room of their new joint command center. Her face was drawn, eyes rimmed with fatigue. It's worse than we thought, she said without looking up. He leaned over her shoulder, studying the holographic display. Entire sectors were blinking out, consumed by an advancing tide of... something. What are we dealing with? Arya's fingers flew across the interface, bringing up fragmented transmissions and grainy sensor readings. They're calling it the Spawn Cloud, some kind of self-replicating nanotech swarm, and it's growing exponentially. A priority comm alert interrupted them. Keed's Pandronian superior, High Commander Zexler, appeared on the main screen. Keed, we need you back on Zephyrus Prime immediately. We're forming a multi-species alliance. Codename Final Front. This threat is beyond anything we've faced. Within hours, Keed found himself in a room filled with the highest-ranking officials from a dozen species. The mood was grim as they reviewed the limited intelligence on their new enemy. The Xeranaraz, a human scientist explained, her voice tight with barely controlled panic. An ancient race thought to be extinct. They created these machines eons ago to fight their wars. Now they've awakened, and they're consuming everything in their path. As the briefing continued, Cade felt a familiar presence at his side. Arya had been reassigned, now officially under his command in this desperate alliance. We've got a potential game changer, she whispered, sliding a data pad towards him. Dr. Cox's team made a breakthrough. There's an isotope that can disrupt the spawn's replication cycle. The catch? We need more of it than exists in all our known territories combined. Cade's mind raced, piecing together fragments of intel from his mercenary days. A half-remembered legend whispered in the shadowy corners of frontier outposts. He stood interrupting the heated debate around him. I have a proposition, he said, his voice cutting through the chaos. All eyes turned to him as he outlined his audacious plan. A mission into uncharted space to raid a fabled Zira Naraz vault rumored to contain a massive cache of the very isotope they needed. The room erupted in argument. It was too risky, too desperate. But as reports of more worlds falling silent poured in, even the staunchest opposition began to waver. 
In the end, Kide was given tacit approval. Not official sanction, but a blind eye turned as he assembled his team. The best of both worlds, human ingenuity paired with Pandronian resilience. Deep in the catacombs beneath the Final Front's staging system, Cade and Arya prepared their strike force. Outside, the distant flashes of battle illuminated the sky as the Allied fleets fought a desperate holding action against the encroaching Nanoswarm. Arya checked her gear one final time, her face set in relentless drive. You know the odds on this one, right? Cade nodded, loading his pulse rifle. Wouldn't have it any other way. As they made final preparations, a familiar face appeared in the launch bay. Dr. Cox, looking haggard but determined, approached with a small case. I've got something that might help, he said, revealing a prototype device. It should disrupt the spawn cloud's cohesion, but only at close range. Use it wisely. Cade clasped the scientist's shoulder in gratitude. With a final nod to his team, they boarded their stealth transport. As the bay doors opened, revealing the star-studded void beyond, Cade felt the weight of billions of lives on his shoulders. The transport's engines flared to life, propelling them into the unknown. Their destination, a mysterious Zira Naraz archive, hidden in the depths of uncharted space. Their mission, acquire the means to save their civilizations from annihilation. As they accelerated away from the embattled system, Cade knew that failure wasn't an option. The spawn clouds grew stronger with each passing moment. This desperate gamble was their last, best hope for survival. The transport's engines thrummed as Cade and his team hurtled through uncharted space. Weeks of grueling jumps and slingshot maneuvers had taken their toll, leaving the strike force on edge. Arya's voice crackled over the comm, tense but controlled. Cade, we're approaching the target coordinates, initiating silent running protocols. The ship's systems powered down to bare minimums as they drifted into a bizarre stellarscape. Holographic displays flickered to life, revealing a web of dormant orbital kill grids and planetoid weapons platforms. By the void, breathed Keed, studying the readouts. The Zira Naraz built all this? Aria's face appeared on a nearby screen, her expression grim. Looks like we're splitting into recon teams. Stay sharp. Keed led his team through a dense asteroid field, their experimental stealth shielding barely holding against the warped gravitic forces. Sweat beaded on his forehead as he navigated the treacherous terrain, searching for any sign of the vault. A priority alert flashed across his HUD. Arya's voice came through, hushed and urgent. Keed, we've made contact with active Zira Naraz constructs, metallic obelisks seeding new nanoswarms. We barely got out undetected. Whatever we're going to do, we need to do it fast. Keed's reply was cut short as his sensors pinged. I've got something. Massive structure inside an asteroid, dead ahead. The vault loomed before them, a hollowed-out nickel-iron behemoth. Its diamondoid superstructure glinted in the starlight, a silent sentinel guarding untold secrets. As they approached, klaxons blared. Massive forms stirred within the asteroid field punching through solid rock like it was paper. Sentries, shouted Keed. Evasive maneuvers. The void erupted in chaos. Human and Pandronian pilots wove intricate patterns through the asteroids, dodging inertialess Zira Naraz machines that moved with terrifying speed and precision. We're not going to make it, cried a voice over the comm. Keed gritted his teeth. Like hell we're not. All ships follow my lead. He dove towards the vault's entrance, plasma fire erupting from his ship's weapons. The concentrated barrage carved a path through the sentries, creating a momentary opening. Now, Keed roared. The strike force surged forward, slipping into the vault's cavernous interior moments before the sentries could regroup. Arya's voice came through, strained and filled with static. Kide, we're cut off, taking the fight to them, buying you time, find that isotope. Before Keed could respond, the connection went dead. He swallowed hard, forcing down the surge of emotion. There would be time for that later, if they survived. The team pressed deeper into the vault, confronting impossible geometries and spatial anomalies that defied comprehension. Keed watched in horror as one of his soldiers reached out to touch a shimmering barrier, only to vanish into thin air. Nobody touch anything, he ordered. Stay focused on the mission. 
They fought their way through self-defending data vaults and narrowly escaped interdimensional traps, losing more people with each passing moment. Finally, they reached the central archival core. Keed's eyes widened as he beheld the isotope suspended in a containment field. There it is, our last hope. As they moved to retrieve it, the wall shuddered. A familiar voice rang out, ragged and desperate. Keed, we're coming in hot! Arya burst through a nearby bulkhead, her team in tow. But something was wrong. Cade's blood ran cold as he saw the telltale signs of suit breaches, the ragged edges where Sira Nara's weapons had found their mark. Before he could react, reality itself seemed to twist. A massive, spider-like machine phased into existence, its multiple limbs already synthesizing new bioformations to hunt them. Go! Arya shouted, her voice weak but determined. We'll hold them off! Keed hesitated for a split second, his eyes locked with Arya's. In that moment, a lifetime of shared battles and unspoken feelings passed between them. Then he turned, snatching up the isotope and racing for the exit. The vault became a maelstrom of explosions and dimensional chaos. Cade's team fought their way towards their retrieval point, the manifold machine in relentless pursuit. Behind them, Arya and her team laid down suppressing fire, buying precious seconds with their lives. As Keed's ship screamed into view, he heard Arya's final transmission. Give him hell, partner. A massive explosion rocked the vault. Kaid's ship lurched into hyperspace, leaving behind the nightmare they'd barely escaped. In the quiet of the cockpit, Keed clutched the isotope container. His voice was barely a whisper as he addressed his battered, dwindling crew. Let's make this count. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.